and 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 see the spirit. Uh, sometimes I can I can sense that something's going on, but mostly my work is through the pendulum. Okay, now you. But friend- then, you know, they're used to it. They've they've been doing this all their lives. So. so they've been able actually to see what the spirit looks like. Oh yeah, physically yeah. We uh we went out in the superstitions. Uh, well, this summer, early yeah, early 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 in the summer, went out in the superstition mountains and trekking around and. Uh, Rhonda saw this old guy with a with a beard, long scraggly beard. It looked kind of like the old uh, old prospector. And she said, "We need to go over there." So we went over there. Of course, he wasn't there physically, but we we sat down, we did our session, and we encountered uh, the spirit of the of the guy she saw. And later th- that night, they were watching a program on the superstitions, and they showed a picture of uh, one of the more famous characters from the superstitions. And she said, "That's the guy." That's the guy we saw. Oh wow! So, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> what type of time? Uh, did they know roughly what type of time frame he was from? Oh, uh, that would have been probably eighteen eighties. They could, you know, generally you can, you can, uh, they can guess pretty, pretty well because of the uh, the way the guy or, or the gal dresses. They can get a pretty good idea. Well, you, and yeah, and it's not something you know. Sometimes you know they won't see them; they'll sense them. And sometimes they'll see see them in extreme detail. It just varies. Well, you know, one thing too. A lot of you know, like the miners and stuff. You know, they just like uh, up when I did the research. You know, when I went up to the Canadian Rockies with all these old silver mines, they were oh, yeah. basically basically they used the Chinese to do the mining. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had a very high death rate. I mean, I noticed that when we were out in the middle of nowhere and we ran into a cemetery. And three-fourths of the cemetery had, you know, what was left of the, the grave markers, where there was ones, uh, were Chinese names on them. And then when I started, you know, uh, I went to like one of the little towns and I was talking to the librarian. And they said that that the death rate was like humongously huge around the 1880s, 1890s, 1900s. Uh, you know, with you know the cave-ins collapsing and oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, the, let the Chinese do the dangerous work. Yeah, that's that's one of the great uh, undertold stories of the West is the Chinese contribution to Western history. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, they made a lot of people rich. Yeah, and in Tombstone there was a, an enormous Chinese population, but it was it was segregated. But there was an enormous population, and they were an uh, intimate part of the business community, but they literally <laughs> were an underground community because they traveled under the city, underground, in the tunnels. Oh, yeah. Now, have you ever gone through any of those tunnels by any chance, or is that something you may be planning someday down to do? Or uh, Not in Tombstone, because you, you can't do that, but uh, I've been down in, in some of the mines down in Tombstone. Okay, I, you know, I, you uh, enlightened me a lot tonight because I didn't even know Tombstone had mines. I, you know, I guess Tombstone from, is built on top of mines. If, if we come a big earthquake, you can see Tombstone uh, drop into a big hole. There are hundreds <laughs> and hundreds of miles of tunnels all through those hills and partially under the town. Oh wow! I mean, yeah, there, there's a pothole there that's been there for 150 years. <laughs> Yeah, I you know it's you know like uh, there's been some places you know lately the ground has opened up, you know, mm-hmm. and swallowed people's you know homes and all that stuff. It turned out you know they were built on top of an old uh, a mine and you know tunnels and you know the ground just kind of like gave out. Yeah, they're like uh, you know in Arizona at least in my neighborhood there's been mining here we know for at least four hundred years, and there there are lots of places that are just undocumented. Well, again, it's like maybe a place not to go for a walk at nighttime. Yeah, I get, you, you never know. Yeah, you never know. You go out in your backyard, and all of a sudden you find an old mine shaft that was covered up, and boom, you're gone. Yeah, it could happen very easily. I've done uh, search and rescue before in, uh, you know, in inside a city limits, uh, in uh, tunnels under the city limits that were you know dug 150 years ago. Most people didn't even realize they're they're built <laughs> their houses on top of a hole. Wow. What, hey, can I ask you a question? What What do the tunnels look like? Uh, imagine a tunnel, a rough rock hewn tunnel, or your typical old-fashioned mine with the cross beams, pretty much. You get back further into further into the mountains, the further you get, the more primitive you get. A lot of times you, uh, 
the, the uh, cross seems to give way to just rock. It, it kind of depends on the, the nature of the rock really more than anything else. Oh, I'm surprised that but, the, the the town hasn't kind of like kind of like made your sinkhole and like disappeared. But maybe if there was, was ever if ever if there was maybe a huge earthquake that could happen. Well, it happens every once in a while. We had one in uh, 1873 that pretty much tore up the state. It it happens. I would not want to be underground when it when the next one occurs. I tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I, no, I I just couldn't believe. It. I never thought Tombstone was built upon a whole bunch of uh, mine, and you know the wow, it's very interesting. Yeah, there's several ghost towns out here that if you if you go there and you look at the maps, you will see that you're standing on top of a shaft that goes down a thousand feet and then spreads out six hundred feet here, seven hundred feet there, fifteen hundred feet over there. It just it's it amazes me what people have done out here, especially considering the the, the technology had they had available at the time. It's just astounding. Now, pretty much was that silver that they were mining, or was it gold? Well, around uh, around Tombstone, that area it would be primarily silver. Oh wow! Yeah, but you know, in Arizona, it's uh, we have an awful lot of copper here too, and gold. And the superstitions uh, that's you know, gold is the lore. Wow. How about, uh, cemet- is there a lot of cemeteries around, uh, you know, any of the mines and stuff like that, too? Oh, yeah, yeah, we had, uh, yeah, you might find this interesting. We were at uh, the uh, the Cortland Cemetery. I remember I told you we had the experience at the Cortland Jail. We did not know about it, but there was a, a, a cemetery out there, and we made friends with a neighbor, and she's kind of the local historian who kind of, you know, guards the area. And we found this, uh, the cemetery, and we... Uh, went out there, and we encountered uh, a, a grave with a broken headstone that was from the Civil War. It turned out it was uh, the grave of a guy named Uncle Simon, and he was like a six-foot-two enormous black man who was a rancher, farmer, and also had businesses in town. And when he died, it was uh, the biggest funeral in, in Cortland that Cortland had ever held was his funeral. He was a very prominent part of the, the community. And we saw the broken headstone, and we were able to uh, work through the, the proper government of federal authorities to get him a new official headstone as a Civil War veteran. Put that out there. Oh, wow. So that, you know, that, was, that was kind of a nice you know, bonus. Did you get any vibes from when, you, when you did that at all or anything? Did I get what? Vibe, you know, vibrations, you know, feelings or anything uh, when, when you got a new tombstone. Were you there when they put the new tombstone in? I, I wasn't able to be there. No, I was unfortunately I couldn't. Uh, when we did the site, when we did our uh, research there, um, I didn't feel anything. I think Dwight and Rhonda, yeah, sensed the presence. There was definitely somebody there, and they could sense his presence because we we chatted with him for a little while. But there was nothing, uh, nothing really emotional about it. It was just a conversation. Wow. But yeah, the experience was nice just because one, we discovered a site that again it was right off the road. We never knew it was there. Uh, we were able to help them out uh, in some ways to uh, clean up the cemetery and keep it in, uh, you know, keep it in, in better shape. We were able to get up in a proper headstone, so we were pretty happy. Did the, I, I take it too? It, it, the, those old cemeteries were really vandalized, uh, vandalized a lot, aren't they? Oh yeah. Well, not this one because nobody knew it was there. Well, that makes a difference. The, I, only, I, the, only, the only vandals there were. Uh, the cattle that had roamed around and they had disturbed some of the some of the grave sites. Yeah, that's that's a problem around here. I mean, yeah. some of the old cemeteries. It got to be a couple of years back where people are actually just going there and and stealing the uh, headstones. You know, and and yeah, people will steal anything. That's amazing, or they will destroy anything. Yeah, you, you know where. Uh, also, you know where the 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 movie set for Gunsmoke. I was reading about that about a month ago. You know where they built the, uh, the little town for doing a lot of the outside uh, filming for Gunsmoke, and they had all the you know like the the, the saloon would have the the piano was in it. They left it. They left yeah. the cook. They left the stoves. They left everything there, and you know there was pictures of it. You know like a year ago, and you know what hasn't fallen down, people took. Yeah. And and that's amazing because they would have had to hike in a few miles, you know. And you imagine taking an old pot belly stove and stealing it and, and getting it out. Uh oh, I think we might have lost him. Oh, are you still there? 
Oh, we'll see. Give it another try. Oh, I think we lost him. We're going to have to call him back. Okay, everybody, I'm going to play a little bit of music here, or maybe not. I'm going to try calling him back. That's what happens sometimes. We get in an interesting uh, conversation, and then it just totally drops out to nothing. And uh, unfortunately, we're using Skype. We're going to uh, switch over very shortly to Zoom. Hello? Yeah, we just kind of like... Sorry about that. My phone went, went nuts. It started redialing itself. Yeah, maybe we're talking about, you know, spirits too much. And maybe somebody were, dropped in. Yeah, they dropped in and... <laughs> You know, it, it does that when we when I have somebody in talking about government conspiracies. That same thing happens. Uh, you know, yeah. the, the phone will just drop totally out for no reason. Well, we had uh, yeah, the, yeah uh, my friend uh, Rhonda when we went out to see uh, Maddie Earp's grave. Uh, she uh, we're very friendly, so she said uh, she invited Maddie to come come back with her to their house. Said anytime you want to come back, we live near Tombstone. We'll try to make a, a happier experience for you. So you're invited back to our house, and they came up with a little electronic code. She said, uh, if, if you come back to our house, I want you to do this thing so I'll know it's you. And that's happened several times. Oh, wow. She, 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 you know, something will happen with the lights or with the telephone. They have their own little code. But when that happens, you know, they'll be talking about Maddie Earp, and all of a sudden that thing will happen, and they well, know that she's there. Okay. Now, again, we got a, probably a, a younger audience and I know they didn't watch, you know, uh, you know, uh, the oh, life and legend of Wyatt Earp. Yeah, and all those yeah. old shows like Cheyenne. Well, yeah. So they don't know who she is. Can you kind of uh, explain to the audience a little bit? Yeah, Wyatt Earp is a, uh, uh, you know, a, a Western hero, a, a, you know, a, a mixed Western hero. Good guy sometimes, bad guy sometimes. Mostly good guy. But he was, uh, his first wife was a common-law wife named uh, Celia Ann Blaylock. And her name was Maddie. They, her nickname was Maddie, so she's known as Maddie Earp. Uh, we call her Celia Ann. And she had a very, very, very tragic life. Uh, at one point, when uh, they were in Tombstone after the O.K. Corral fight, uh, Wyatt pretty much just abandoned her. And she uh, was kind of thrown to the wind, and she ended up... Uh, uh, you know, at the, the the worst end of the the line of the line of prostitutes in a place called Pinal, which is right outside Superior, Arizona, and she was a uh, you know a hooker at the end of the line, and she eventually died of an overdose of alcohol and laudanum. Okay, now yeah, a lot of people don't line. know what that is. Now that that's basically like taking a whole bunch of what uh, 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 very bad drug with a lot of booze. Yeah. It, just basically to get high and oh, not yeah. realize what, what what she probably had to do that just to survive just what yeah, she painkiller. had to go through yeah emotionally well, she just, was uh, she had uh, extremely uh, bad teeth for one thing and she was in constant pain the last couple of years of her life so she took law them as a painkiller. Well, I know a and lot of course, a lot of people took it also too in that time frame, you know, because you know the prostitutes they they really didn't want to do it. It was horrible and and. They had to basically be stoned all the time, is the proper word to say it, I guess, yeah, for they I mean, could the, do their job. Yeah, sadly, you know, the, there wasn't that much working opportunities for a, for a woman back there. Your options are very, very limited, and that was that was one of them, and it was a tough life, especially you know, at the end of the line when you're down in the cribs. And that's pretty much where she was. And uh, the, the people there... Uh, today, I mean, Pinal is not there anymore. It's, it's a it's a it's a ghost town. It's it's all ruins. But the people of Superior protect Mary's grave site, Maddie's grave site. They're very protective of it. So she made it. An, she made an enormous positive impression in her time that has lasted through this day. And we have visited with her several times. She's in book one, and she's in book two also. Now, a question: uh, When did Wyatt Earp die? Oh, God, 1923, 26, somewhere in there. Yeah. 1920s. Wow. Yeah, I, it, yeah. It, 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 you'd think somebody who, you know, was a lawman, you know, just walk out and leave your, your spouse. I mean, regardless if you were married or common law or anything, just, you know, just abandon and, and, and move on like nothing, yeah. you know? It's just, you know, of course, I guess life was so different then, you know, I guess you didn't. I guess maybe you were, a lot of people were actually cold. They couldn't have 